Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Yes, it's me from the three month vacation and with a cold all of this week. Well, this podcast is going to be slightly different because I can barely process anything, but it still has three valuable tips that I've picked up while listening to podcasts. And the first of these tips is just the concept of an idea. When we have an idea, we have this exuberance, we have this enthusiasm, we want to go ahead with the idea. And then you go tick, 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 and a little time passes, and then the idea doesn't seem so interesting. And it's not just work-related. You may have an idea that you need to fix the kitchen, you need to replace everything, and it seems like a good idea. Everyone's kind of on board, and then... Oh, there's so much work. All the objections start to pour in, and then it's not such a good idea anymore. And what this person was saying on this call was that you have to treat an idea like a little sapling, and that that sapling has to grow a bit. And you can't go after a week and go, hey, what are you doing? You haven't grown that much. So the idea has to grow. And for it to grow like a tree, it needs water, space, time, And that's really what we don't do with ideas. We get the idea, and then we jump onto the other idea and the third idea, and they're all little saplings that never get enough time to grow. And what you've got to do is, if you've got an idea, give it time. Let it grow. And there are times when it doesn't grow. There's a tree just outside our house, and we planted that sapling in 2013. Now, eight years later... It hasn't grown much. So there is a problem, but we've given it eight years. Most of the other trees, the olive trees, we've got about a dozen of them. They've grown a lot. Then we've got mandarin trees, or bushes rather, and they've grown a lot. And we've got mandarins and oranges and lemons and limes and apples and all of that stuff. But you have to give an idea space. You have to let it grow, just like a tree. And that's the first concept that I wanted to talk about. Something that resonated with me quite a bit. Which takes us to the second concept, which is give the opportunity for the other person to say no. Just before we moved to New Zealand, I had picked up a book in India. This book by Jim Collins, Good to Great, became an international bestseller. It sold a million copies, two million copies. I think it's up to three million copies now. Anyway, Jim Collins became a much sought-out speaker, and I think he charges around $50,000 per speech. As the story goes, Jim Collins has been invited to this event where there is this other speaker. They're on the same panel. And this other speaker is Jim's idol, or one of Jim's idols, And he says to Jim, well, get in touch sometime. And Jim goes back and he thinks about it. He wants to get in touch with him, but somehow he feels that he would be wasting his time. And he's having this conversation with his wife, Joanne. And at one point, Joanne turns to him and says, give him the chance to say no. And that line just stuck with me so much because... Recently, I've been a lot into photography, and what I do is I go out and take pictures of strangers. They've never seen me before, not three seconds before, and I'm pointing a camera at them. The natural reaction is to just be all creepy about it, aim the camera, shoot, and run. But this kind of concept, which is give the other person the chance to say no, is extremely powerful. Because what will they say? They will say yes, or they will say no. And what happens is 
if you approach it with this concept in mind, which is give them a chance to say no, then you get a lot better at asking the question so that they don't say no. My hit rate when I first started taking pictures was very low. I wasn't able to get people to agree to have their picture taken. After all, as I said, they don't know me at all. But over time, most people ask for their picture to be taken. And that's a radical shift. And that's because my whole perception has changed. I'm giving them a chance to say no. And yes, of course, I've changed some of the techniques, but that's what the whole thing was about. And to go back to the Jim Collins story, he took his wife Joanne's advice and he went and he called the person that he wanted to meet. And that guy said, oh, I'm so glad you got in touch because, you know, and he he told his part of the story. But this is kind of what we tend to do. We're not giving the other person the chance to say no. So whether it's a date or it's taking photographs or it's approaching a client or it's doing anything, maybe you're on a forum like 5000 BC and maybe you have a request from me or from somebody else. Give them a chance to say no. That's it. So that's the second tip that I got. And the third one, which is not connected to the first two, is just the concept of a habit. I was listening to this podcast where this guy said that he shows up to the gym every single day. And it's not like he loves going to the gym. He just wants to keep fit and so he goes to the gym. But some days he just goes to the gym, checks in, and then goes back home. And it makes no sense. To most of us, it makes no sense that you would go all the way there. Because when you listen to all of these habit experts and people who write huge books on habit, like as if you need a whole book, because a habit starts and stops in one second, it doesn't need a whole book. Anyway, I digress. Back to the story. So this guy goes to the gym and he just checks in and then goes back home. And his philosophy is that a habit is something that you don't think about at all, like brushing your teeth. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to put it on a to-do list. You just do the same thing every single day. And when you do it every day, that is a habit. And his concept is, let's just go to the gym. And whether we work out or we don't work out, that's irrelevant. The chances are that he gets more workout days than most of us do. And I found this to be true when it comes to all of the other stuff that I have to do. So we have stuff that we'd like to do, and there are stuff that we have to do. And all the stuff that we have to do, we do, because it's urgent and important, and we can't get away from it. But there's also stuff that we would like to do, like I would like to paint every day, or I would like to take photographs every day. And that's what I have to do. I started to take my camera with me everywhere and take at least one photograph every single day. Usually I end up with a thousand photographs that I keep every month, probably 2,000 or 3,000 in all. But it started out with just taking the camera wherever I went. Didn't matter whether it was to the wedding, to the cafe, to any place. There was just one habit. I haven't been so successful with my diary, my cartoon diary that I keep. And that is because I don't open it every day which because I'm telling you now, I'm going to open it every day. Just open it and then close it if I need to. And that's the kind of habit you need. And you'll find that it's interesting. Some days you'll just open and close it, but at least you've done that. And most of the days you'll go a step further. And that brings us to the end of this podcast. What are the three things we covered? The first thing is that ideas are like trees. You have to give them space. If you've got an idea and you're enthusiastic about it, you have to give it space. And yes, there is a chance it won't grow after a while. But you have to give it space to let it grow. You have to give it some water, you have to give it sunlight. You have to give it space. The second thing is give the person the chance to say no. You don't know that they're going to say no. And... 
In many cases, they might say no, but then you'll improve your system so that they are more acceptable of your, not demand, but request. So give them a chance to say no. And finally, habits. Yes, you can go and buy a book. Yes, you can buy an entire course. But it is something that you don't think about every day. Don't think about it at all. You just do it every day. And you don't go through the entire habit. You don't have to go through the entire exercise routine. You just have to do one step. And if you've done that, you've done it. And you'll find that that is the one thing that you can start right away today. So when people ask me, what's the one thing I can do today? Well, it's a habit. It doesn't have to be a complete habit. It just has to be one little thing. Having said that, when it comes to brushing your teeth, go through with it, okay? Brush your teeth. Don't just pick up the toothbrush. And with that sad little joke, let's find out what's happening in Psychotactics Land. Many of us want to create info products, and there is a reason why we want to do that. The first is, we have a system that we want to put down on paper. That's probably the biggest reason for you to create an info product. Frustrating as it might be to put all that information, you need to know how the customer is going to consume that information. So when we have a course on info products, which is what we have on the 28th of July, this is not a live course, it's a home study. What you're learning there is how do I put this information together so that the customer gets to the end point? Because when they get to the end point and they get a result, then it's not just information. What you're giving them is a precise result. So let's say you want to write a book on how to photograph strangers. Well, they don't want information. They want to know how they can photograph strangers on a consistent basis. How you put that information together is what the information course is all about. So this info product course is on the 28th of July. And if you would like to get some goodies and sign up to the waiting list, then go to psychotactics.com and then go to products because you want to look for the products and under home study, you will find info products and you can sign up to that and you'll get a whole bunch of goodies. And it's weird that it's called info products because it's not information at all. It is how to get the result for the client. And the biggest reason for that is so that they can come back to buy another one and another one. And that's pretty much how we have run our business since the year 2000. Clients have come back repeatedly, which is why we don't have to do any advertising. We haven't done much in terms of strategic alliances or joint ventures or anything of that sort. All the stuff that you see on the internet, all of that hoopla, we're not doing it. And that is because the client is coming back. Seems very odd. No, that's how a restaurant runs. They give you a result and when you get a result, you go back for a second meal. You don't need to give information. You need to put that stuff together so that they get a result. And that's pretty much it from Psychotactics Land. I'll say bye for now and see you in 5000 BC. Still listening? Well, we're about to go on a little five-day trip. Usually we take three months off and you know that we work for about three months and then we take a month off. But in between, we also take a little trip. And that is just because the intensity of work becomes so much that even a couple of days makes a huge difference to how you look at things. You're not putting out the garbage and you're not doing all of that stuff. Anyway, we decided to take five days off. We're going to the north of New Zealand. That's Northland. Someone came up with these names, Northland, Southland, North Island, South Island. Lots of creativity in those names. I'll say bye for now, and we'll see you in 5000 BC. Bye-bye.